Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to some Dark Souls 3. Now, this is some footage that I played off-stream. Fortunately, it's become somewhat of a habit of mine to tap that F11 key, which is my shadow play key, whenever something cool happens. So, um, most of this, most of what I played, you folks aren't going to miss out on. Well, most of the, what I feel is, like, the really noteworthy things. Now, it started off with some PvP, but it eventually gets into some actual progression of the game, which is something I really didn't want you stream viewers to miss. But here we have an instance of me playing. This was uh, last night, but this was, you know, before bed, just doing some PvP, just so I could find a way to play some Dark Souls. Um, the, uh, the host of Embers actually ran into the boss fight, and here is their co-op partner. I'm assuming it's their co-op partner, trying to get to the boss fight. I, I am able to take them down. <laughs> before they get into that boss fight to assist their friend. Again, I'm just assuming it's people who are doing this co-op, but I do manage to take out the Phantom, and now the Host of Embers has to take on... Uh, Host of Embers Arietta here has to take on the Abyss Watchers by herself, and I'm surprised that she was able to enter the boss fight without it actually kicking me out uh, of, the, of this world, so being unable to get in, I can just only sort of watch what's happening through the fog wall. Now, having seen this fight before, I can kind of tell what's going on in there. And as you can see, most of Ember's Arietta is taking quite a bit of damage, so instead of just leaving the game myself... <laughs> oh, one thing that I found interesting was that at this point, it actually does show the cutscene uh, in the middle of the fight, even though I'm an invader and I'm just kind of sitting watching idly by getting little glimpses of the fight here and there through the fog wall. I just thought it was kind of neat, kind of odd, kind of neat, kind of cool. Kind of interesting, we'll say, that uh, it does show the cutscene. So that's actually pretty cool. But eventually, I'm th you know I'm thinking to myself, host of Ember's Arietta here is uh, I I'm here to I'm here to take down the host, right? <laughs> and what better way than to let the Abyss Watchers do it? So they make it to the second half of the fight. Arietta makes it to the second half of the fight here, and you can see they're taking a good a, a good deal of damage. And I know just how difficult this boss can be. For those who watched my stream, you saw. That I took quite some time to take down this boss, and knowing just how difficult this boss can be, I decided to wait it out. And eventually, yeah, Arietta runs out of Estus, and the Abyss Watchers do their thing, host of members destroyed. There we go. Good job, me. I totally did it. I rocked it. I, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, just right now during this commentary, am I thinking to myself, wow, actually, by taking out their co-op partner, maybe I did enable that to happen. Oh, and check this out. It's amazing. Well, I'll just, I'll just let this play out here. Boom! Did you see that? I used the weapon art for the uh, Uchigatana, the parry, the weapon art parry on this Black Knight here. That was awesome. Pick up a number. And I was going to say, it's amazing how much better you play when you're not streaming, when you don't have all those things going on in your head that go on in your head while you're streaming. And without having the other stimulus of like reading chat and things like that, just the streaming is so much of a different experience. It's it's incredible how much better you play. And here is more case in point. I've got an invader in my world this time. They come and invade me. Um, they roll around a bit. I find them in a good spot. I do an emote. They do an emote back. I like when that happens. It's really cool. It means we're going to get into a, a duel type. And once again, I'm going into the weapon art here. I take a little bit of damage right up front. And I'm going into the weapon arts. I use the R1. And now, seeing I got a feel for how the lag goes, and now I'm going to use the weapon art R2 this time. Boom! A predicted parry land it with the weapon art. I don't even need my shield to land parries when I'm not streaming. I'm loving this Uchi Katana. That's pretty awesome. So I do take out that dark spirit, but that's uh Ember Hunter. That's the player's name, Ember Hunter. If you were watching carefully, you noticed someone else actually uh, invaded as I was getting into position to fight here. And so I decided to do something I, I haven't done before, and that's use one of these little uh, transformation twigs that lets you turn into a box to try and hide from this invader. And now I've got like these embers floating off of the box, so it looks kind of obvious, but they're you know, there's so many environmental effects that happen in this game that that's easily something that you can overlook. And as we can see, this invader totally does. <laughs> they go off on their own, ignoring the box there. And because I'm kind of catty-cornered right there, it looks like it's, you know... I feel like if you're a little bit too perfectly placed in the corner, it stands out it, it stands out a little bit more. But if you're kind of catty-cornered like that, and it looks like you're an environmental object that's moved around, it seems to kind of work. So eventually, I just sit it out here, sit and wait it out with these embers popping out of this box. And, uh, yeah, Farron, uh, sorry, Dollars was the name of uh, that player. Dollars eventually heads out. 
I take my normal form and I just continue going on, man. That was <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. This is something I may very well not have done while streaming because it's just one of those fun things that you do. It takes patience and when you're streaming, you really want to get things you really want to keep the ball rolling, so those kind of things are just things that you might not do when you're trying to entertain an audience. Although, that would be very entertaining, despite how long it may take for that to happen. I get another parry off with my Weapon Art R2 against these uh, Dark Raids right here. I decided to farm these guys for a little bit, because um, I think every time you take these guys down, they drop uh, a Creo, they drop a Cracked Red Eye Orb. I think every time these two Dark Raids get taken down, they drop a Cracked Red Eye Orb. So I'm farming them here for a bit. And what I'm really farming for, because I don't really like doing invasions since they prioritize being ganked, but um, what I'm really farming for here is the Dark Raid set. I want their full armor set. So here we can see I'm farming them up. And I, I continue to use the Weapon Art on them because the Weapon Art's a really good way to hit them both, and it staggers them almost every time, if not every time. So I'm looting up these Cracked Red Eye Orbs. Um, I just figured I'd share that these are a cool way to uh, farm those Red Eye Orbs. Eventually, I do get the full uh, Dark Raid set, including their sword. Uh, at this point, I've got the sword up to plus three, and, and then I go exploring a little bit. For those who are watching my stream, you know I'm searching for that doll to get through that uh, fog wall across the bridge in Irithel, I think that's the name of the place. But you know I'm looking for that doll, so I'm exploring around a little bit here, and I feel like I have a lot more freedom, a lot more time to do that when I'm not streaming. And I encounter this area uh, out here that I haven't found before. Now, I've been to this zone, but I missed this whole large section of the game while I was streaming, again, because there's all kinds of things that you don't really account for when you're... Uh, when you're streaming, or it's difficult to say, but there's a whole lot of things that you don't really notice that easily while streaming. You have more time to look around and stuff. So well, while while you're not streaming, you have more time to look around. But while you're streaming, you don't really get that uh, luxury too often. It's difficult to explain. I feel like I'm talking a little bit too much about that. But anyway, I found this whole section of the game. Find this twin uh, dragon great shield, and there's this little side path. Uh, on the side of this building here, there's a little narrow pathway over here, and I take out these dudes. I, so besides that Twin Dragon Great Shield, there's also an Estus Shard out here that I found. A lot of items that I'm just kind of following point to point as I get out here, because I see them, I go for them, I find these little paths, I go explore these little paths. It's really nice um, that I got the chance to explore this in a more leisurely fashion. As you can see, I am cosplaying uh, a Dark Wraith here. I wanted to go PvP with it a little bit, but I'm just kind of having fun at this point. I find the Estus Shard. I don't really intend to use the Dark Wraith as my main means of progressing and playing the game, but it's just fun to do. I've got the full set, I've got the weapon. Why not play around with it a little bit? So I do a little bit more exploring, and it, there's this whole little keep area over here. You know, it's kind of worn down. It looks like a small little castle type area. There was a crystal lizard. I took out a bunch of um, enemies in this area over here. Still doing some more exploring. I fall into this trap in the ground right now. Very well placed trap. And there's an easy way out, of course. But it's just fun that I, you know, found this little area like this. There are some monsters here for me to take down. I am still trying to get used to the dark raid set and the sword, the dark sword. Uh, it's a straight sword. I'm using it one-handed at this point, just trying to get used to the moveset. And it doesn't deal as much damage as my Uchigatana does, so there's you know, still things for me to uh, become more accustomed to. But I'm having fun with the weapon art with this weapon. Boom! Just like that right there, as you can see. It's really fun stuff. And, of course, uh, as has been the theme here, I'm finding some things I missed before, like this sorcerer set. I didn't read the description of the sorcerer set, but I did find this sage ring, too, and I did read the description of that sage ring. Pretty interesting stuff overall. And of course, there is still some more exploration uh, going on overall. And it's a lot of, it's just been a lot of fun doing all of this. Now, at some point, I do stumble... <laughs> at some point, I do stumble across this. Now, this is a big part that I missed in my stream. And you can almost see the... Wait, hold on a second. You know, that expression. You can almost see that in my body language here. Like, wait, there's a boss. I should be streaming this. I don't want my viewers to miss this. Fortunately, you don't have to because I was able to shadow play the whole thing. I find this Crystal Sage boss. I I didn't find this boss to be all that difficult, to be honest with you, but I, maybe I am at this point a little bit over-leveled because you do come through this part of the game a lot earlier, and I think I've been through like one or two whole areas of the game before backtracking, so the boss really isn't that difficult. There are some messages outside saying that you should probably bring an ally and things like that, and some messages saying that they're really happy that they did it, I believe. So it just wasn't really that tough of a fight for me, but I think it's really interesting that uh, there's this whole, this whole huge section of the game that I missed out on. So even though I'm still looking for that doll, 
that I can use to progress in that Irithyll area. Even though I'm still looking for that, I feel like I'm making progress and doing really well. I'm just going to go ahead and let this fight play out at this point. And down goes the Crystal Sage. I had my Ember at the ready because I ran out of Estus. I think I entered this fight with only one or two Estus charges. Uh, so I was caught a little bit off guard by it. My Ember gets restored from winning the fight. Got the Soul of a Crystal Sage. I still haven't seen what that soul can make yet, as far as boss weapons and items are concerned. But after that, I do a little bit more exploring. I find there's a whole huge path even beyond that. So again, this whole huge section of the game that I completely missed out on, I just ran right by. Uh, so it's kind of like a branching path off from that one zone with the big crabs and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a branch out from there uh, that I just completely missed the uh, the branch for uh, to get to. So I come over here. I take out the baddies out in this area. And again, there's some more stuff that uh, I missed before, of course, because I haven't been here. Find some more goodies again, as is the theme with this whole session right there. Found some Herald gear. I haven't read the descriptions on that yet. I really should go back and read those. I'll probably read them on stream if I remember. But there is that. Afterwards, we cross a little bit of a bridge here, and it's just a very short hop from the Crystal Sage, or the Sage Crystal Crystal Sage <laughs> uh, bonfire. There's another bonfire. So, I like this one. And um, at this point, there are these stairs going up, and I read this nice little message up here saying, Be wary of hidden path. And then the little emote points in that direction. I'm like, Oh, look, hey, that's pretty cool. It's probably something I could very well have missed my first time through either way and there's this assassin dude down here um, once again I think I'm a little bit over leveled for this particular area but he does take very little damage from my attacks however he is one of those uh, characters who doesn't have very many who very much in the way of defenses no shield or anything like that and typically these kinds of characters these kinds of enemies you can just R1 your way to victory because they can't defend against it they don't have this this character in particular doesn't seem to have, have a whole lot of uh, mobility or anything just a lot of a lot of flurries of attacks. So it's pretty easy to take down this character. No problem. Again, still just getting accustomed to this uh, Dark Sword, which won't really be my main weapon. I'm still going to be using the Uji Katana. I am, for example, still putting points into decks. And here I find some Paladin's Ashes, which is really cool because you can take that to the Merchant and get some really cool stuff there. Now we'll continue on, we'll hit up this bonfire. And there's a message there that says, Time for parrying. And right up ahead, I do see the target about which that message is referring, or to which that message is referring. So I do put on my target shield, and I check to make sure I don't have a fat roll. And I want to go try it out. Now this is a fight that I could have ended a lot more quickly than the fight actually ended. But I was I was determined to get a parry and a riposte off on this target. A lot of that is due to the fact that this target sort of, well number one there was a message saying time for parrying and that just sounds fun, I love to parry things. And number two, this target kind of reminds me of, this enemy kind of reminds me of one of those uh, bandits in that really dark forest area of Dark Souls 1. So it seems really cool, I just wanted to get the parry in. 
So I do that a lot of I do that a lot, a lot of attacks through as I'm trying to get the parry timing down. So this fight could have I probably could have ended this fight like really quickly if I hadn't taken the time to make sure I get a parry and repost off. As we saw there, that first parry uh, failed, and I, I th believe I do land a parry at some point. Actually, I do land a parry at some point, but because of the uneven ground, I'm not able to capitalize on it. I think I think that may very well have happened just now. Um, and then I think I land a second parry at some point here. I'm getting a lot of partial parries against this against this one. Get a flurry of our ones off, and then I get a parry right there, but I don't have stamina. I don't have the stamina to follow up with a repose, which is a shame. So I've got to wait for another parry. So I'm going. I'm just chugging through Estes right here. It's no big deal because there's a bonfire nearby, but I'm waiting to try and get a successful parry off. We are on even ground at this point, but I don't think that's where the fight ends. I get kicked. Waiting for his attacks, but he's not making any. I think it's because he's low hit points. He's trying to keep his shield up. And he's trying to use his ranged attacks. There we go. Get a parry off. And I get off the repost, even on uneven ground on these stairs. And I finish the fight off that way. Just one of those things I was determined to do. And we get a spider shield out of it. Pretty interesting little shield, because you can still use your weapon skill, even with that up, which means you, uh, you can't parry with this shield. Pretty interesting stuff. So I explore the area a little bit more and find this pathway up leading to a crest shield, which is also pretty cool. There's a note saying try ranged battle. I think that's if you got up there first before facing the target, before facing that parry dude, the dude with the axe and the spider shield. If you got up here before fighting that... Uh, character, then you probably could have done a ranged battle thing. I use Spook to get down so I don't have to run down the ramp. There's a message here that reads, uh, be wary of enemy horde, so I'm sure I'm going to get ambushed if I go in there. And I'm thinking it might be these plants, you know, because we've seen those before in Dark Souls 1, the plants that pop out of the ground. So I was thinking it might be them, but it's not. And I see an item over there, and I notice that this is another huge area. So that's something I want to cover on stream. So I turn around, I decide to end this particular play session. Uh, I go back to the bonfire, and it's time to go level up and spend these souls and give the ashes and use that Estes flask to, uh, oh, sorry, that Estes shard to reinforce my Estes flask. So it's time to go do all that stuff. I put a point in vigor, a point in endurance, and then I give the uh, merchant her, I give the merchant the paladin ashes, and then I do the whole Estes thing. Farewell, Ashen One. Oh, how may I be of service? Gracious, passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash be stone nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> so anyway, that's how this session went. It was pretty cool that I was able to capture all these highlights with shadow play. I didn't expect to make a whole lot of progress, if any, but I did go exploring and ended up stumbling upon all kinds of things, which is what this video was all about. And yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and let this the rest of this play out for a little bit here, just so you can see the point where I give uh, Andre the Estes Shard. And I think that will do it for this particular video. I hope you folks enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you folks next time. Ah, tis good, what need? Pretty be careful.